our lives, we are faced with many hardships. Some of those hardships, we have to carry the weight of on our shoulders. But what happens to you when that weight becomes so heavy that it crushes you? Three years ago, I lost my grandmother to pancreatic cancer. Her and I were very close, so as you can imagine, this was really, really hard for me. The picture shown there is her before she was sick, and here was while she was sick. And I knew that I was going to lose her, and I knew I wouldn't have her forever. But any kid thinks, yeah, I'll have my grandparents forever. I knew it in the back of my mind I wouldn't have them. But as an 11-year-old kid, when I lost her, I thought I would have her forever. And it was terrible. I had pushed everyone away. I had cried myself to sleep. I didn't let anyone in. At school, I missed so much class because I was in the guidance office just crying my eyes out because I knew I wouldn't have my grandmother. It was terrible. I had so much trouble not trying, trying not to cry in, my, in the classes I did go to or trying not to cry in front of my siblings at home because I wanted them to see me as strong. But the woman that I had been, that I'm losing, had been the closest family next to my mother to me. And it had terrified me that I knew I wouldn't have this woman who I'd know, grown up going to her house on the weekends, sleeping there, going to a diner with her and getting silver dollar pancakes. And I just knew that my life wouldn't be the same. And today, I still do wear stuff she's given me. This necklace that I'm wearing right now was hers, that she got when she was my age. And it was just terrible for me. But during school, I had friends. They really could not care about anything that happened to me. Even, they would just gossip even more than they did if I told them what had happened. So I didn't even bother. And I regret that because not letting anyone in made me dig myself down into a hole that I'm still trying to crawl out of today. I'm still clawing my way out. But I know that there's going to be a light at the end of this deep, dark hole. And back to going to my old public school, my, I was ready for a change. My parents had heard of SRDS homecoming and I decided to go. I enjoyed that. I decided to take a tour. I enjoyed that too. And then I decided to apply. And well, if I didn't get in, this would kind of be a little weird because <laughs> why would I be talking at a SRDS event? But I, as soon as I came, I was welcomed by these amazing people right here who, are, who welcomed me in to the grade with such love and kindness, who immediately welcomed me in and just showed how much they cared. And I would never be able to have been who I am right now if it weren't for these amazing people. And yes, I'm including my dog as a person. I love you, Bear. <laughs> I, while I've been here, I've done some amazing things as well. I've, one, been to DC this, just this year as an eighth grader, a 14-year-old kid. Um, been to DC, TEDx Mid-Atlantic with the amazing pe some of the amazing people in this TED group. I don't laugh. I've joined the girls basketball team even though I'm the most unathletic person ever. Um, and I've also founded the SRDS chapter of the Girls Empowerment Club, ETRE. Um, and it wouldn't have been possible for me without my family and these amazing people. That Spotify picture, I was with um, the girls from Etre, um, and it wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to stand up here without that woman sitting next to me because she encouraged me throughout the whole seven months I was doing this. And that little girl right there, my little sister, was with me the whole time. And even though I don't have a picture of him, because I couldn't find a good one, because he's like 
not photogenic. Um, <laughs> my brother was with me the whole time. They all stood by me. I'm serious. He just like doesn't smile. Um, and I knew it wouldn't be possible without these people, but they stood by me. And yeah, it sucked losing my grandmother. But I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I know that, yeah, I might still be um, clawing my way out three years later of the hole I dug myself into when I was 11. But I don't care. Because I'll, I know that at the end of that, there'll be a light. And that light, I think I finally reached today by sharing my story. Thank you.